This lecture is on local breezes. We're going to talk about land breeze, sea breeze, mountain breeze, and valley breezes, and then wrap it up with the scales of different types of breezes. So these local breezes will occur because there's a difference in heating rates between two locations. For land and sea breeze, we're going to talk about the heating rates between land and water. Land has a low specific heat, where water has a high specific heat. Remember, specific heat is the amount of energy needed to change the temperature of a substance. So land has low specific heat, which means it does not take a lot of energy to change. Where water has a high specific heat, therefore it does take a lot of energy to heat up, but also cool down. A sea breeze. Remember, winds are named from the direction they come from, not from where they're going towards. So a sea breeze, the wind's coming from the sea towards the land. This is going to occur during the daytime. The land's going to heat faster than the water. So the land's going to get really hot. If you ever go onto the beach in the middle of the afternoon, and if you walk on that dry sand in your bare feet, it's very hot. Almost to the point where it's painful. This expanding air, where the air is warm, is going to create a bulge upward in terms of pressure over the land. This will create a pressure gradient force that's going to push towards the ocean. Okay, so here's a diagram. Note we have a sun because it's daytime. The land's going to heat up, therefore the air is going to rise up over the land. This creates a higher pressure up top, so the wind is going to go down the pressure gradient force over to the sea and we're going to sink over the ocean and then it's going to come back. So remember this whole circular motion is called a convection cell. If you're standing here on the land, you're going to feel wind coming from the ocean. Therefore it's a sea breeze. This diagram shows you how the pressure gradient force and the winds form from the sunrise to sunset. Notice the sun's going to go in this direction. So we're going to start up here. The sun's just rising up. This will be the Atlantic Ocean since the sun's rising over the ocean. And early mornings, our isobars are going to be relatively flat and uniform. As the sun rises a little bit higher, the land's going to be now warmer than the ocean. Air above the land's going to start to rise. That's going to create our pressure gradient force. Our isobars, you know, are going to be higher over the land. Wind's going to go down the slope from high pressure to low pressure out to sea. It's going to sink over that cold ocean, and then it's going to come back towards land. Okay, notice we have a moon up here. The ocean's now going to be warmer. That's going to cause air to rise over the ocean. That's going to then cause a downward slope in our isobars towards the land. Air is going to sink over the cool land and push out to the ocean. So if I'm standing here on the land, I'm going to feel wind coming from the land. Think about a time you maybe took a walk on the dry sand late at night or in the very early morning. If you go on your bare feet, it's going to be pretty cold, almost to the point where it's uncomfortable. So that gives you an idea of how the land's going to be really hot during the day where it's uncomfortable to your feet versus at night when it's really cold. The ocean water really doesn't change temperature from day in and day out. For mountain and valley breezes, there's going to be a very similar concept to land and sea breeze. One part of the land's going to be heating and cooling more rapidly than the other part, causing a wind. So valley breezes, they're going to be the ones that occur during the daytime where mountain breezes are at night. For valley breezes, the thin air above the high mountainsides, they're going to warm quickly, much like the sand did in our land and sea breeze example. Warm air rises, creating an upward slope breeze that becomes the strongest around noon or high noon. Mountain breezes occur during the night. The high mountain slopes are going to cool very quickly, just like the sand did. This cold air, dense air is going to form a local high pressure area and the pressure gradient is going to drive the breeze down the slope towards the valley. This is going to be the strongest just before sunrise. One big example is the Hiraoshi breeze. This occurs along the mountainous shoreline of Lake 
Biwa in West Tokyo, Japan. Kaibatic winds is a another example. Strong mountain valley breezes due to a steep sides, typically with snow covered plateaus. Another example closer to home is in Colorado and the Columbia River. Okay, so valley breezes again occur during the daytime. This thinner air warms really quickly, especially when it's facing the sun, when the slope is facing the sun. That's going to cause this warm air to rise up. It's going to come over, it'll sink down, and then this warmer air will again rise up. Okay, mountain breeze comes from the mountain. This is going to occur at nighttime. The air up here is going to cool pretty rapidly. It's going to have a higher density. It's going to sink down into the valley, and the valley will cause the air to warm up. It'll rise and finish the convection cell. We have two examples. The Chinook winds coming from the Rocky Mountains, and the Foam winds coming from the Alps. Okay, our last topic is the size of our winds. We have four main categories. Microscale, micro means small. Mesoscale, meso means middle. Synoptic and the planetary scale is going to be the largest. Microscale winds are categorized with winds that are less than a kilometer in size. Generally smaller and puffy cumulus clouds form from these microscale winds. The pressure gradient force and the centrifugal and frictional forces are most important for these microscales winds. The Coriolis force is not important at this level because remember it takes wind moving six miles in order for the Coriolis force to take an effect. Some examples of microscale winds we have dust devils, small rural winds of wind. Mesoscale, meso again means middle, this is going to be between one and a thousand kilometers. The Coriolis force is going to start to become important once we get above that six mile range. An uh, example will be hurricanes, thunderstorms, fronts, and sea breezes. Synoptic scale, at least a thousand kilometers in size. Geostrophic balance uh, between the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force are most important at this level. Examples, cyclonic and anticyclonic forms. So these are your high pressure and low pressure systems. The planets carry scale, roughly about a thousand, uh, I'm sorry, 10,000 kilometers in size. Geostrophic balance is very important at this level. For planetary scale, we're going to focus on our global wind patterns, such as our westerlies, our trade winds, and our polar easterlies.